You're watching the It's Her Time podcast with Cody and Jess. Welcome back to the It's Her Time podcast. My name is Cody Sanders, and I'm a holistic health practitioner and functional nutritionist. And this is the place where we talk all about hormonal health and happiness. Today's episode, we are going to talk all about hormone health and endometriosis. This month is Endometriosis Awareness Month, and I have a very special guest, somebody who is a hormone expert. Her name is Anna Gonzalez Herrera, and she is the founder of Hormone University. She personally shares her story of endometriosis and other hormonal imbalance issues and surgically induced menopause and how this has helped her to be so inspired to help so many other women with the right kind of education. Because when we know how to help ourselves um, be able to fill our best, then we will be able to show up in the world as our very best self. I loved this conversation. It was one of my most favorite interviews ever. And I'm so excited for you girls to get to know Anna. But before we go into this episode, let's join Jess for a Mixers Girl Say. On today's Mixers Girl Say, we're going to do a fun this or that edition of questions. So while you're listening answer these questions to yourself. We're going to answer them too. We ask these questions all on social media and it's fun to hear women's feedback. Yes. I so love it. this or that, Cody. Okay. When you want to feel fancy, Ooh. do you do your makeup or do you go get your nails done? Well, I go get my nails done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that is I what don't have 56% them done I'm, <laughs> of women said. Not feeling fancy today. Not feeling fancy, <laughs> so Cody doesn't have nails done today. No. Um, yeah, 56% of women said they go get their nails done too. Okay. Would you rather get out and be active or stay in and relax? Oh, I know your answer. You already know my answer. Get out and be active. Mm-hmm. Cody is one of the most active women I know. And I love it. She's always up for a good time. I Yeah, and being outside is my mm-hmm. favorite thing ever. Mm-hmm. It's... I, I go crazy when I can't go outside. So yeah, yeah for We're sure. We're starting to get like spring in the air oh. here in Utah. Like, yeah. I mean, kind of. It'll probably be snowing this afternoon. It's 25 but, degrees outside. But I mean, but yes. <laughs> I am meaning the sun is shining yes. and we'll take it. And it's coming up a little earlier. Yeah. But 74% of women said they'd rather stay in and relax. So maybe you and me will be alone getting out and being active. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. We'll have fun. Okay. I want to know what you, you got to answer some of these too. Oh, I get out and be active. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. yeah. But next one, you get to answer. Okay. I'll answer this one. Okay. Are you spending time with family or friends that feel like family? I feel like it's tough because a lot of my family lives out of the state. Yeah. So like my siblings live out of the state and my parents are awesome. They're traveling all the time. So I do. I spend a lot of time with my friends that feel Mm -hmm. like family. And you have incredible friends. Yeah, and I think I you're do. just one of those people too that like creates friendships that are like family. So yeah. I that's, I, that. I love that quality time with the friend groups that like, yeah, yeah, you're good This at that. says it very well. Friends that feel like family. Yep. That, those are the relationships that I love. How yeah. about you? Um, you spend I spend a lot of time with family. I do. I spend a lot of time with my family, my husband and my kids when I can. Mm-hmm. I do love my friends and love to spend time with them, but I, it's harder for me to like, find the time to do that. Mm-hmm. I need to be better about it. I'm like always impressed. I'm like, how does Jess do this? How does she have time? <laughs> but it's because you, you're you willing to stay up late. Oh, and I'm I was like, going to say, I'm like, usually I'm like in bed and asleep by 930 <laughs> for me. sure. I'm like, it's nine. And if I'm out. with my girlfriends, it is. It's like we start hanging out at like nine and it's a sacrifice of sleep. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm past those years. And I'm okay with that. that, Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're and you're a good time. Come on, Cody. (laughs) I'm even a better time when I get past that point when I'm so tired that I'm delirious. I'm an even better time. But if you want the best of me, let's go get some breakfast like Mm -hmm. first thing in the morning. That'll be the best. I love it. Yeah. Last one. Would you rather online shop or go to the store? Online shop. I hate shopping. Mm -hmm. Are you a big shopper? No. No. I used to be. Mm-hmm. I feel like for a long time, everyone was online shopping mm-hmm. and I didn't really like convert. Mm-hmm. And now, no, I'm even online shopping and I even am like 99% like Amazon. Yeah. Even my clothes. Which I want it. I want to <laughs> like, be that person that's supporting all the local businesses. And if you I do, you're good. If I, yeah, I, I like to do that, but I just am not somebody that enjoys the shopping experience, unless mm. I'm shopping for other people. Mm-hmm. That's fun. But when I have to go shop for myself, I'm like, torture. Feels like torture. Have you ever heard the 
the comment, I know like my friends, we for sure talk about this. It's like the dressing rooms, Mm -hmm. dressing rooms, something about it. Like someone has to find the way to Mm -hmm. give dressing rooms in retail locations, like a makeover. It's always like the mirrors and the lighting don't really do us any favors. And so I feel like it's, it doesn't make shopping fun. Someone needs to improve that. Yes. Give me like, please a a tanning white. (laughs) A skinny mirror? (laughs) Something. (laughs) But anyway, I'd rather online shop too. Also, 66% of women said online shopping. So we're not alone in that. Okay, let's get into the episode. Mixers is a company made for women by women. Each of our products have been carefully and lovingly crafted to support you in all stages of your life, providing you with the optimal health you deserve. Each ingredient we handpick is 100% all natural, backed by science, and chosen specifically to better your life physically, mentally, and hormonally. Each product empowers your body to take charge of its monthly hormonal shift and flows, empowering you to live life to the fullest. Let mixers take care of your needs from sunup to sundown, and you take care of the rest. Check us out at mixers.com, M-I-X-H-E-R-S. Anna, this this conversation is so needed, and I'm so excited to have you be part of this conversation with me. You have such a wealth of um, knowledge, and I love especially your heart because I feel like we're very aligned with what our mission is and helping women to understand their health so that they can, you know, um, be their own best health advocates, that they can understand why things are happening and and how they can take better control so that they can go out and do their best in the world. So I want you to say hi to our audience and then share a little bit about what you feel so passionate about and what we're going to talk about today. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me and hello, everyone. It's really, really nice to be your guest at your podcast. And uh, my name is Ana Gonzalez Herrera and I'm the founder of Hormone University and Globotanica. And Hormone University is all about education and community. So I'm excited to talk about everything that we're doing and the importance for all of us to learn about hormonal health. Yeah. It's it's important for us to learn about our hormonal health because it literally controls everything, you know. Um I don't think we realize. I think we feel like these hormones are some something out there in the ether, you know, that's like somehow having an effect on us, but so many women don't realize on a day-to-day how much it affects basically everything. It's our emotions. It's our energy. It's our vitality. Um, There's so many things that our hormones play a role in. Um, And we don't always pay attention to it until we start getting um, bombarded with these really debilitating symptoms, you know, that start out maybe just being annoying, but then can get louder and louder and louder and become very debilitating um, and and keep us from being able to... um, to feel the way that we want to. And again, like I always say, show up in the world as we we want to. So I think it's, we can't really talk enough about hormone health. We really can't. Um, it's something that should be on our minds every single day. And the more we know about it, the better um, we'll be able to be to adjust, to make little course corrections if needed so that we're better able to work with our hormones instead of doing things that we might not even be aware of that might be working against, you know, our hormone health. And so, so yeah, tell me how you kind of got involved in this world of hormone health and, and what inspired you to create such an amazing platform, which girls, we're going to, we're going to link this in our show notes, but this hormone university, I think that this is such a brilliant um, concept and such a wonderful resource for all of us. So tell me how all of this started for you. Yes, I, I think as for most founders, uh, everything starts with something that you go through yourself and the obstacles that life uh, can can bring and you face difficulties with your health. And in my case, it was stage four endometriosis. Um, adenomyosis. I also had PCOS and I went through basically hell (laughs) through many, many years, over a decade of very, very debilitating pain, uh, infertility in, you know, the outcome of that was uh, a very, you know, tough uh, situation with infertility. And I had to go through five surgeries. So it was, um, really tough, tough uh, period of my life, which was very, very long. It kind of 
you know, it felt never ending. And for anyone listening here who has gone through endometriosis or is going through endo or knows someone, Mm -hmm. uh, one in 10 women go through endometriosis. I often say it's a whole body issue and uh, it's, it's basically, it affects so many different parts of you. So in my case, um, like I said, five surgeries and the last uh, surgery I had to go through um, a full hysterectomy and a colon resection. So the average woman goes through seven years of premenopause and menopause. And uh, many people don't know the concept of surgical menopause. And surgical menopause is is very, very shocking to the body. So I, I often say I went through the worst PMS and the worst menopause. So that, that, Basically, Cody led me to research uh, in this area. I consider myself as a very fortunate person. I I grew up in Spain and I, I studied in different countries and, you know, I have had access to great education and I had no idea about hormonal health. So that was that was the, the kind of breaking point for me where I thought, okay, this this is just not right. Mm. And that was why uh, sitting with a friend one day and she was like, you're so passionate about this. And I I also joined as a board advisor at the Endometriosis Foundation of America. And that's when I was like, okay, I have to do something myself. And um, that, you know, women, as, as women, we have to advocate for ourselves. So that was yeah. the, the, the genesis of Hormone University. Amazing. Amazing. And, you know, I think that's, that is where, um, so many of us, like things that, um, we bring to the world that are worthwhile, they usually do, um, all begin with our own personal need. Right. Um, and I, we always talk about how, you know, at the start of mixers that it started honestly, as my business partner, Jess and I, as being the original girls in need that we same, same thing, you know, and I was, also struggling with hormone imbalance and seeking answers. And I, I was, I'm a practitioner and I was working with hundreds of women, um, weekly, you know, monthly uh, coming to me with all of these, um, stories about the ways that they were suffering and how hormone imbalance was affecting them. But then so frustrated because, um, they, first of all, they didn't understand it very well themselves, like what could be the root cause to some of these hormonal imbalance issues that they were struggling with. And then just the solutions that were being provided for them, they were so limited. And, um, and that was very hard for them because it gave them very little hope. And in fact, one of my very best friends um, has a similar history, a health history as you do. She's, she's somebody who has suffered with endometriosis stage four, has gone through several different surgeries, has had the same um, type of issues with infertility and all of that as well. And and she was a huge driving force for me personally as a practitioner to really um, go into the research and, and try to figure out why. Why is this happening? Like, what can we learn from, um, from these symptoms, from these issues to help us better understand about what is, you know, what's the imbalance going on in the body? And is there, you know, is there any hope to helping to address it and how, you know, to help support with healing possibly and things like that. And so, so I love knowing that you are right there with us. You've been in the trenches. You understand this. Um, your heart is not just, you know, thinking, oh, this is a good idea, but you have a passion behind it. And I think that that shows as I've looked through the resources that you are sharing with us on um, the website, you know, that the Hormone University, I think that it shows. I think that's why it stands apart. And that's why I'm so excited to introduce you to our audience and have them understand that there are so many people out there that are trying to, um, to make it better for all of us. So thank you for that. And I'm so excited to, um, with that understanding of like where this all began for you and who you, who you are, I think that that, that just brings a level of trust and, um, and helps us to all feel like we can relate to each other. So I love that. So, okay. So thank you. Let's continue on this with, with this conversation, because I do think that, um, there's so many things that we can share now this month is, um, endometriosis awareness month, which is great that there's a whole month that's dedicated to endometriosis awareness, because like you've said, it's something that unfortunately there, there's not a lot of awareness still, it's getting better. Um, it does take an average of seven to 10 years for a woman to get a 
and diagnosis of endometriosis and even just the understanding that there's different um, like stages of endometriosis as well. Um, these are things I would love for you to teach the audience just a little bit more. Let's start even from the beginning, from somebody who's literally just wondering if this is something that they are suffering with. What are some of the um, signs that you f- or symptoms that you first experienced? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Great question, Cody. I'm so glad you bring this up because um, effectively there is still a lot of um, questions around this. And one of the reasons being is that unfortunately there are still doctors that dismiss symptoms and um, they tell women that they might just be uh, a question of having a heavy period or a, a, a difficult period. And the biggest mistake I made was to stay silent. Um, and in my case, I, I do have to say that I was lucky to get diagnosed very quickly, very, very quickly. So I was in my early 20s and I had very, very difficult periods, very heavy uh, horrible cramps, um, uh, vomiting and headaches. And, oh, it was just, you know, one of those uh, horrible pains where you you can't move. So um, I I went straight to my OBGYN back in Spain and he, he was one of those doctors that you don't get anymore, you know, he stayed like an hour with me. He explained everything to me. He drew everything for me and uh, he was just very, um, what's the word, I guess, empathetic. And yes. that is rare, very mm-hmm. rare these days. Um, and so I I would say to your audience, anyone going through very, very tough periods, uh, definitely, definitely go to your OBGYN and just, just ask questions. And one of the things that we do at Harmony University is our newsletter is called The Waiting Room for a Reason. <laughs> Yeah. And that is because we need to get prepared. Uh, I often say uh, wellness starts with knowledge, right? Once you can ask the right questions, then you can find ways to get better. So, um, so yeah, those were the, the key symptoms for me. And um, just to explain uh, what endometriosis is, is, is when the lining of the uterus kind of implants itself, infiltrates into different organs. And there is also a misconception here that it's just your reproductive organs, but um, it can go anywhere in your body. It kind of actually acts like cancer. It's not, mm-hmm. obviously it's not cancer, but uh, in my case, it went to um, my colon as well. It infi- infiltrated my colon. And there are cases out there with endometriosis in your skin, uh, your eyes, your um, lungs. So it's it's kind of like a very strange thing. And so usually what happens is that you can't um, expel or detoxify estrogen. And that kind of takes me to this world of endocrine disruptors that Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited about. So so yeah, uh, I I went through all of that and it's just a nightmare. So it's it's very very tough. It is so tough because I know that um you know you did have a full hysterectomy. You have had your endometrial tissue that was implanted and other parts of your body removed. But even with that, like a surgical procedure, sometimes that's not always. Um, going to be the fix, right? And so, um, so I think what you just even ended with um, with your statement was just talking about how it's your body having a hard time, like um, with and with estrogen dominance and expelling some of the um, the excess estrogen out of your body, and um, it's it's something that um, is hard for all of us to do, but especially for those of you that have endometriosis, this is where your your system is very is struggling, and so it's so important for us to kind of understand why that's kind of where one of the main root causes is, is it comes from um, estrogen dominance, but then we dive deeper into what is causing the estrogen dominance. So that's where it's important for us to understand hormones and how they um, they function in our body, but how these different processes and systems all work together um, to help us to stay balanced um, and what we can do to actually support, you know, as best as possible, these different um 
processes. And so one of the things that I love to teach women is about how important it is that obviously we we live in a world where we are exposed to a lot of toxins. Toxic overload is one of the main root causes of endometriosis. I mean, of sorry, also endometriosis, but estrogen dominance is what I meant to say. Um, and it's also nutrient deficiency um, is another one. And then also an overload of stress. Those are the three main root causes that lead to this condition um, or this hormone imbalance consider, that's considered estrogen dominance. So there are some things that we can do to help support our body more. And we just need to be more vigilant, especially if you do receive a diagnosis of endometriosis. There's things that we can be um, very aware of and be proactive with. Now, with that being said, I also don't want to sound like, I just think it's a quick, easy fix. You just do this and and, Mm. and we're going to share some of these tips. These tips are going to be very helpful for you girls today, but I also want you to know that um, it's a complicated condition. It's a complicated disease in the body. And, um, and I think there's a lot of research that still needs to be done. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot that we still need to learn about this, but what has been successful for me, and it sounds like for you too, Anna, is um, being aware of some of the ways that we can help to maybe control what we can control. And what you just brought up was um, being aware of the ways that we are being exposed to different endocrine dis- disruptors or toxins in our system. So that's one of the things. So let's let's dive into that because I think that it's it's so crazy to me in a way to have these conversations. I just was having a conversation yesterday with a group of ladies, and um, you'd think at this day and age, in this day and age, that we would be more aware of the effect of the things that um, we're surrounded with, whether it's the things that we're breathing, the things that we're touching, the things that we're putting on us, the things we're putting in us, all of that. That that you know <laughs> will have effect with us, and especially on our hormones. Um, so with endocrine disruptors, can you um, can you go into a little bit more about that? What does that mean? What does that look like? And what can we do about it? Yes, absolutely. It's a huge subject mm-hmm. and it's now getting a lot of attention. The other day I spoke to the uh, author of a book just about endocrine disruptors. He's a, an incredible um, pediatrician. And um, I look, endocrine disruptors are everywhere, as you mm-hmm. said, from fragrances to um, plastics to the environment to everything that we put on our skin. And what basically what these disruptors do is that they mimic the function of our hormones. So you can just imagine, you know, the body is basically saying, well, what is this, right? What is this external agent trying to become part of our body's hormonal system? So um, it can it can basically lead to that excess estrogen level. Mm-hmm. And, and so we, we have to be really careful about everything that we eat, everything that we put in our bodies. Uh, our skin is our largest organ, right? And mm-hmm. it, it, it is so, so important that you read the labels and, and that you know what you're doing in terms of everything that uh, you drink or you eat. So, um, so yeah, in a nutshell, that's what they are. Um, and I feel that this is going to be a much bigger subject and it's not, no longer going to be about, let's say, clean beauty. Mm-hmm. It's going to be uh, a lot bigger than that. Good. And that's good. Right? I, I feel like finally, right? Finally, it's finally. so important. But I also don't want to overwhelm our listeners and our those that are viewing us on YouTube today. I, I want them to understand that the awareness needs to start and then we can start taking almost baby steps. Um, but being aware of how these things are affecting us, you know, these um, endocrine disruptors are considered xenoestrogens. And I've ta- I don't want to get too sciencey, but we've talked a little bit about this on this podcast. So I feel like our listeners are, are educated in this. They understand that we have these estrogen receptors in our cells and they're designed to actually, you know, um, attach with our, you know, alpha and our beta, you know, we have these alpha and beta receptors. And, and what happens is when we are exposed to these endocrine disruptors or these xeno, xenoestrogens is they act as if it's coming from our own body and they attach. So it takes over, it takes over what our natural estrogen is supposed to be doing. And it doesn't leave room for our natural estrogen to do the, the magical job it's supposed to be doing in our body. So that is why we start experiencing and um, some of these terrible symptoms that are associated with it. So if we can take a little bit of 
time to read labels and to be aware of what it is that we are putting in our bodies or what we're breathing in. Um, The conversation that I had yesterday was about scented candles. Now, we all love our Mm -hmm. environment to smell beautiful and nice and clean and all of this, um, but we don't realize the impact that it might be having. And so creating or making a little simple switch, like where this fragrance is coming from, um, it's amazing how quickly the body thanks you for that. Um, I know, for instance, um, this conversation again that I keep referring to um, was talking about how she loves these fragrant candles, but she's experiencing migraine headaches, you know, um, on a regular basis. And so it's like she didn't realize that this actually could have a, an effect on her. And and I I shared my own experience, you know, how just removing that or things though, even like, you know, the smell of laundry. I think people love the scent mm. that comes from detergent or from dryer sheets. But the clothes that you're wearing are touching your largest organ of your body all the time that you have them on. And so it's constantly you're absorbing, right? And so just these simple little um, steps of just maybe replacing what you're currently using and finding a healthier, cleaner, better version is some of the best medicine that you can honestly um, give yourself. So, So I love that there's becoming more awareness of that. And I, and I love knowing that you, you speak on this as well. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, uh, at Hormone University, of course, we have content around endocrine, endocrine disruptors, but we're actually going to be launching a certification, a seal of approval for brands to show consumers that those brands are hormone safe. So this is, it's a big initiative that we're launching this quarter. We're very, very excited about it. That's amazing because, you know, that will make it so, so much easier. So we should easier. be talking about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it for sure. Because, yeah, because, you know, we're talking about it in this conversation, but sometimes it's hard, you know, because people are like, I'm not a scientist. I don't know what I'm supposed to be. You say read the labels, but how do I know what I'm is okay right. on a label and what's not okay? There are resources out there that can help you. There's even apps, you know, things like that, that you can, you know, scan right. labels and it will give you a guide on, on the level of toxicity. But having this resource like that, Anna, that's so exciting. Congratulations on that. And thank you. Thank you for um, working on that and, and being such an advocate for all of us um, as consumers so that we can choose safer products for us. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think... Look, Cody, I think that the bottom line is, and uh, you know, you you talk about hormonal imbalance, and and ultimately, is that balance that we need to achieve, right? Mm-hmm. And so, this this our our aim at Hormone University is also to give anyone coming to our platform or subscribing to our newsletter all the options and very objective information, right? So. Uh, there are many, uh, you you know this as a practitioner, that now there are many women who want to get off the pill, as an example, right? So that's a huge subject, and we're getting a lot of requests. They want to know how to do that, right? And what are the things that they can do to get off the pill and the consequences? It's almost like, you know, uh, I don't want to... Um, exaggerate things, but, um, I, I also like to talk openly, yes. you know, it's like, it's like getting off an, of, of an addiction, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so your body needs to readjust without those chemicals. And so we at Hormone University, we like to inform and do it in a way that is objective. We're not recommending any course of action, right? So, mm-hmm. It's if you are on the pill and that works for you and that's your choice, then read about it, understand, right? right? Understand what happens to your body. That's what we want you to do. And if you want to get off the pill, then also understand what you need to do. And it's the same with IUD and it's the same with anything that you want to do with your health. So that's Mm -hmm. our whole goal. And um, it's a a big message that we always like to to tell people and, and to your audience in this case. Yes. And oh, we're right there with you. That's our whole mission too. It's it's obviously as women, we we are responsible for our own health. But I think so many for so many years and the history shows that too many times we've kind of um put our health in other people's hands. Um and and trusting that we're getting the information that we need. But unfortunately 
Um, especially like what you're bringing up with birth control, there's not a lot of um, information that women are given as to the long-term effects of birth control on them. I think there's a lot of women that don't realize that it's actually, um, there's a black box label on it, which <laughs> means that it's like a carcinogen. So, right. I mean, like people don't realize that, but the, the birth control pill is being handed out. I, I say it's being handed out like candy because I find um, that there's right. a lot of practitioners here in the United States, especially, I don't know what it's like in Spain and other countries, but for any symptom of hormone imbalance, it's offered as the solution. And I, I am so frustrated by that because um, I feel like it makes such a huge um, impact on our health. Yes, it is very effective for um, protecting against pregnancy, but does right. it help to address the root cause of hormone imbalance? Does it help to support healing of hormone imbalance? No, you're not going to find that in the birth control, but you don't know that unless your doctor, um, you know, or your practitioner shares that with you. But right. what Anna and I are here to say is that there are other resources out there. We want you girls to recognize that there's more than one source. So you don't need to depend just solely on your practitioner to give you this information. We encourage you to do the research, to learn, to become your own best health advocate so that you understand what it is that you're putting in your body or on your body and why, why are you doing it? And then make an educated decision on that and do what's best for you. You have the right to do that. That's everybody's right as a woman, as a human, to be able to do that, to make health decisions for themselves based on the the right education, right? Um, I think that that's, that's incredible. And so that's what we're here for is we want to empower every woman to feel like that's possible for them. That's brilliant. I love it, Cody. Um, we're, we're totally aligned here. Yeah. And um, look, it's, I, I, I agree with you, of course, it's contraception. However, however, we already have so many tools, right? We, we can, we have apps and we can control and see when we can get pregnant and they're just so I understand right that mm -hmm. of course it's just easier um but let's think about long-term consequences too and yeah. especially let's just learn it's 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 something I I learned um that is kind of related to these as well painkillers uh were only tested on women in 1992 I mean all of that time, right? Yeah. And, and 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 again, you know, it's a painkiller, but it has certain chemicals that affect us. And so let's always try to not to look for short-term fixes. That's, mm -hmm. I guess, my, my message. And I say this with full knowledge of how horrible it is to go through pain. Yeah. Um, but if I knew back then what I know now, I would have taken a very, very, very different course of action. So, so yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. Um, I think that's what it is, is we mostly just want women to understand that there are actual other options out there. So whether it comes to like what we first talked about with the products out there that we use, there are more natural, you know, products that are available when it comes to birth control. There are very effective options that are out there. You just aren't aware of them. Um, I love teaching women about fertility awareness. I love teaching them about the natural signs that our body gives us to let us know when we are fertile so that we can, you know, naturally just know um, because we're in tune with the ebbs and flows of our hormone um, balance and, and this, the signs that our body gives us, whether it's our body temperature, whether it's our cer cervical fluid, it's, you know, these things are nature's way of telling us um, or giving us uh, the control maybe that we didn't realize that we had and we thought we needed to outsource that control um, with medication. And the same goes with anything like pain medication like you brought up or any type of pharmaceutical. I think that they, they're they definitely a, a, a blessing and there is a need for some of these pharmaceuticals um, at a time. But I, I want women to understand that they're not the only solution that's out there. There are so many things that we can do to naturally support our bodies um, for pain um, control, for you know, for all of these things that we're we're talking about today. And so that's where it's it's wonderful that these resources like what you provide um, are out there. It's just it's going to open up um, so much, I think, to so many women to recognize that oh, okay, you know, I'd never even heard of this. Like, what do you mean? How how else can you? control pain besides just taking a narcotic, right? Like, so, so yeah. So, I mean, I, let's, let's talk about that maybe a little bit, just, I don't want to go too far off on a tangent, but 
Um, what are some of the things that you have learned? You said that you wish you knew, you know, back in the day, like, what is it that you wish you knew that oh, you could gosh. have done differently? Lovely I know. subjects. Yeah. Cody, thank you. I know. It's fun <laughs> to talk about. It's so fun. Um, well, um, you know, it's funny. My my dad was a huge proponent uh, of naturopathy and food is medicine. And, and then uh, my mom was the opposite, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and my mom was a, a stay-at-home mom. So, of course, you should be like, oh, you have a headache. Here you go, right? right. And, and then my dad would get all annoyed about it. <laughs> Why are you having to do this? And so, um, we had this... this um, a collection of books from uh, a doctor, a na- naturopathic doctor at home. And this was a huge influence in my life. Uh, but I spent um, most of my uh, professional life in other countries. I, I went I, I went to London and, and then I went to New York, but I also lived in other countries. And so when you said earlier, you know, in the US, you get the pill is prescribed very easily. That happens all over the world, Is that right? all mm-hmm. over the world. And I do have to say they have done a great job at um, at making this widely a- a- available everywhere in the world. Right. So so I if I knew that diet is crucial to healing um, endometriosis in the long term, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, I would have for sure, for sure, have started a proper diet without gluten, without sugar, without caffeine, anything that's inflammatory, right? I would have also taken the steps to clean my home and not be um, facing all these endocrine disruptors. I, I certainly would have taken natural remedies. I would have gone to see a nutritionist. I mean, Mm-hmm. Just so many different actions um, that I honestly, Cody, I didn't even think of doing it because, of course, you trust the person that tells you, "Oh, you need a laparoscopy, mm-hmm. and this is the only way for you." Mm-hmm. And and so here is a pill in the meantime, and here is a hormonal treatment in the meantime, and that's just so you just do it. You don't question it, and so that's another part that. Um, I, I definitely have learned the hard way. You have to question, you have to challenge and advocate for yourself. I, yeah. I wish I had done that. Um, and I was very silent in, uh, in, at work as well. I was very, very silent about it. And in my last job, I was, you know, I had a job and uh, was a partner at this firm with, with two other guys and, I never said anything. I was embarrassed. I was really embarrassed. You know, I grew up with three older brothers and it was just, you know, one of those subjects you just don't talk about. It's taboo. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, now I say to my nieces and, uh, you know, like, and my nephews, like, support your sister, (laughs) you know, be nice to her. So, yeah, it's so important. Yeah. It is. And I know, and I, don't you wish we had a time machine and we could go back and, and learn. But I think that the experiences that you and I have had um, have helped us to be in a position where we understand so much about what women have dealt with and suffered with um, and, and are here in a way that we can express that there is a better way. Um, so especially for those women who are just beginning their their journey into wo- womanhood, I think how what an advantage it would be to them to understand the things that you just shared that that food the nutrition that we receive um is medicine the um the exposure that we have to different chemicals and and the you know the priority we put on putting clean you know chemicals not chemicals clean clean ingredients right in front of us and around us um and also the ways that we can manage stress stress in, in and of itself you know can cause inflammation and inflammation can cause stress in the body and so there's just all, those are the three main root causes of um what we've talked about with hormone imbalance and what leads to endometriosis and other extreme hormone imbalance um diseases in the body and so if you can start your daughters, your nieces, your granddaughters on the right foot by sharing this information. I mean, it will be to their benefit for sure. Um, but for those of us who've, you know, been down this road for a while, we're at a different phase of life, a different stage of life. It's never too late. 
it's never too late. It's amazing how when we can course correct and we can do the things that um, support our body in a loving way, our body responds pretty fast. Now, it, it's not a quick overnight fix. Nothing that's worthwhile is. So it's it's a it's a process to learn how to not look for, like you said, the the quick fix. You know, the quick solution. Instead, understand that we're looking for long term health and. Um, and, and, and it's going to take time. It's going to take consistency. It's going to take all of these things. It's an everyday emphasis, but it's worth it. And it's, and the, and the hope that it's, you know, knowing that it is effective, if we can understand that and believe that and know that to be true, then I think we'll be more motivated. But I think what the problem is, is that so many of us have been told that there is no hope. There's no solution that this is the only solution is to cut certain things out of your body or to give you a medication or, you know, something like that. Um, and that's really the only way that you're going to be able to um, enjoy any type of, you know, life, you know, that that is, you know, in a good, healthy state. And so I think that that's what's so fun. I love having I love everything you just shared and I love having this conversation because I really do hope that it's like hitting home to our listeners today that that there is so much that we can do. Brilliant. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I, I thank you so much. You're, you're a wealth of knowledge. I'm excited for our listeners to go in and, and take advantage of all that you're putting out there in the world, Anna. So much good. You're putting so much good out in the world. So much we love. We are. We yeah. are. <laughs> so much love is behind it. So much heart is behind it. And, and that matters. And so thank you for that. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience about things that they, ways that they can connect with you or resources that are some of the, you know, life-changing resources that you recommend to people? This is your opportunity. I would love for you to share that with our audience. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really encourage everyone to subscribe to our newsletter. I personally write every Sunday an email uh, that I spend a lot of time researching and um, the whole objective of Hormone University is to give information, provide information that is um, very well researched, but that is very clear. So none of the crazy jargon that is hard to read and mm. hard to understand. So we deconstruct that. And, and so we have the waiting room, which is that newsletter for uh, everyone to learn what questions to ask. and uh, And it has a mix of different content. And then there is my my Sunday email that um, uh, I love writing and researching. So yeah, please come to Hormone University. Follow us on Instagram, hormone, at Hormone University. And uh, happy to answer any questions if anyone wants to uh, reach out to me. It's Anna, A-N-A, at hormoneuniversity.com. Amazing. Thank you so much. I know that I hope everyone right this minute is going and um, and looking this up and and joining the newsletter because what an incredible resource this is, like we've talked about. Um, the more we know, right? The better we can do. And so that's what this whole podcast is about, girls. And we love that you tune in every single week. It's going to make a big difference in your life. It's going to make a big difference in the in the women's life around you, the people that you love. So please, if this was an episode that spoke to you, that you felt is um, valuable to you, we encourage you to share it with the girls in your life because sharing is caring. And that's what, as women, we do best. And so we appreciate that you tune in every single week and we look forward to getting back on and having another amazing conversation next Tuesday. We release episodes every single Tuesday. We also continue the um, conversation over on a platform called Mixers Girl Community and you can join that by going to our website at mixers.com. That's M-I-X-H-E-R-S.com and you just go to the top right-hand corner and click community. And this is where often some of these questions about you know the episodes that are... Um, go out every single week. You guys share what you thought was best about the episode. You have, you share questions that you have and you just discuss it. And I just feel like the more we can come together and have these types of conversations and the support, you know, that's available in these types of communities is incredible and we're changing the world, right? That's what we're here to do. So thank you so much, Anna. Thank you for taking time to be with us. And it was a pleasure getting to know you and thank you for all the good that you're putting out into the world. Thank you so much, Cody, for having me. Such a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Talk to you girls next week. Until then, have a very happy and healthy week. Bye.